Hello and welcome to the only show that takes you around the world from the comfort of your living room. My name is Michael Zimanji, standing in for Alex Chamwada, and this is what we have lined up for you today. 20-year-old Melchizedek Namai from Butere is just getting used to life in America. His dream is to study cybersecurity and be part of efforts to make Kenya's cyberspace secure. Cybersecurity experts are very few. So I just want to show the world that, hey, Kenya Pia took on a skill. In Dakar, Professor Willis Obura shares his 20-year journey of shaping young African minds. I have actually visited and worked in over 42 African countries. Yes, quite an entertaining show we have in store for you. And to kick things off, we head to the United States, more specifically the state of Virginia, where 20-year-old computer programmer Melki Zedek Namai has a story to tell. Alex Chamwada has more. Sasa, hey, hey. tumefika. Thank you. Uh -huh. Hapa ndiyo mnaishi. Hapa ndo mungu. Oh, wow. This is the Chamwada. 20-year-old Melchizedek yeah. Namai is relatively new in the yeah. US. Hapa yeah. kabaridi. Mezoya maisha huku. Mezoya imeningia. It's barely a year since he landed in Virginia for the first time to join his parents. I'm pleased to learn that Namai is not only a follower of my shows, but has been an avid fan of my work for years. James Nzawala, the GM of the newly launched Serena Goma. I've watched you my entire life. Wow. <laughs> I used to know you back, back then when you were in Citizen. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, when I was a kid, you, ju you just do not know one, you, what you want to do in future. So you are there like, oh, that's Alex Jamad. I want to be like, Nataka Kwakama Alex. Wow. Oh my goodness. Umeni peleka Pennsylvania, umeni peleka Europe, we've been to Congo with you. Wow, what a humbling moment for me. And back to Namai's journey as he made his first entry into the US, his was unique as it happened at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. Actually, you are the, the last people after us. I think the, the travel ban, the boundaries were closed. closed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It was terrifying, but the visa, we only had three months. Like, we have May, June, July, and the visa would expire. Since I was a kid, I just wanted to just explore the world. How people, different cultures live, different foods, um, meet new people, and more, more so, I'm above all, make new friends. Nilikuwa nasema ni meona movie mingi, ya diniki enda majusi ya zipotea. Yeah, that's what I... <laughs> yes, movies and reality are different. Niki angalia vile nilikuwa na expect itakuwa, na venye hiko, ni vitumbili tofauti. I expected, niki fika hapa, ile expectation you'll just be pesa hiko. Pesa, pesa. Pesa hiko, yeah. niko na pesa, yeah. you know get. Land of milk and honey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yo, <laughs> Ivo. For that dollar, you have to work for it. Uh -huh. You have to work for it. Let's now shift gears and focus on what brought Namai to the U.S. Cyber security studies. According to Namai, his love for computers started when he was a young boy at Elukoho Muluwa village in Butere. This passion grew stronger when he was first exposed to computers at Kapsabet Boys High School. We call it Laz, Ladies Attraction Zone. <laughs> yes. So when I was introduced to computers, then add code, and then uki code, it's the output. Okay, on Ike run, the chords run, you enjoy, you feel like, wow, this yeah. is the thing. Currently, Namai works part-time as a computer programmer with a dream of one day becoming a cybersecurity expert. 
cyber security experts are very few and in the next four years, four to five years, 75 million jobs it are replaced with the automated mm. systems. Mm. This means um, when these jobs are replaced with the automated systems, wezi watatoka ile watatoka from ile kuibia na nguvu wana kushikia bunduki, wana kumag, watarudi sasa watanza kuibia watu on the internet. Mr. Q will be on the internet. I want, eh? I want to ensure you are safe. In addition to this, Namai also hopes to change the narrative about Kenya and technology. When you check the rankings on how countries are prepared against the cyber security attacks, I mean, Kenya we are ranked ukochini. So I just want to, to show the world that, hey, Kenya Pia took on a skill. We, we, can, we, also, we also can do what US can do because, in fact, we can do better. I've come here to learn these new things, how they do their things, how they want to fight corruption, their, their systems. Nerudi Nijenge home. It is this love for his country that keeps him grounded as he pursues his dream in a foreign land. When you compare the two lives, um, home and here, people keep to themselves. Unlike home, naweza kuja kwako ni bisha nikwambie ni aje Alex. Chumvi hivi si naweza kuja kukula hapa kwako. I literally haven't it's been a year and I do not know. I know none of my neighbors. To reduce the homesick, um, I watch I watch Champs Media TV. <laughs> I watch Champs Media TV. I have a few friends. Friends um they live here, we meet, tunanda Starbucks, we drink coffee, you know, we cook ugali, we eat skuma. You know, when you're in a foreign land, the only way to forget you're in a foreign land for, for a minute, you have to meet that person who mm -hmm. comes from the same land as you. Muna mm -hmm. story, like, niki kiswahili. Yeah, feel, you feel home. Ah, eh? niko home. In our conversation, Namai keeps sharing what he has learned about the U.S. It's not a land of milk and honey, but there are opportunities. You have to work. I'd prefer home, because home uko na shamba, unalima, hapa una shamba. I mean, sa zingine, it's just not si pesa. Sa zingine ni ile to happiness. Great, from Eluko Homolua village in Butere to Virginia State in the U.S., a dream come true for Namai. And this is his advice to the youth. In this contemporary world, you don't have to travel physically to learn the people's cultures, to meet new people, to just know all about the world. You can do it online, through the online platforms. Wow. And that, that's what I used to do mm -hmm. through the Champs Media Daring Abroad. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Alex, for that inspiring story. Now, from the United States, we come back to Kenya, more specifically Kiambu County, where there's a Kenyan company that is involved in the manufacturing and exportation of handmade bags that are made from recycled material. Take a look. What if I told you that what you're seeing on your screens right now is not trash, but rather raw material for highly in-demand fashion accessories. Yes, from backpacks to wallets, pencil cases to fanny packs, all these beautiful and unique products are made from recycled material, more specifically, cement sacks. And the company responsible for turning this trash into cash is none other than Newsy Black White, a fashion company based in Kikuyu, Kiambu County. First I came as a volunteer to Kenya in 2017. I was part of the Karai Children's Vocational Center, which is a project with a children's home together with a primary and vocational school. I was assisting in the tailoring department uh, together with the tailoring teacher. I met all that wonderful young women and I had the feeling to first to create some fair working places for them and also to support the project in a regular way with our own income. 
was looking around Kenya, I saw that there's a lot of waste, especially these gunia sacks, salmon sacks, were all over, and I saw them that they were just burned on the construction sites. That's how the idea came. Let us try, wash this material, and we try to recycle it, because it has still some nice prints and could be very attractive also in the European market. So first everything starts with collecting the sacks. So either we go around and we get them on the construction sites, for sure we use only used salmon sacks, yeah? otherwise it would be not environmental friendly. Yeah? So we go around, we collect them, or also sometimes the people, they bring the used sacks for us yeah? instead of burning. Then the next step is that we start washing the sacks. Yeah? We clean them with some brushes and soap. We have a big uh, yeah, karai where we are going to wash them. We dry them so that the salmon can be out fully. Yeah, so after that we come to cutting. Now the cutting process is quite special because every bag is unique. So we have to cut according to the print and for sure according to the condition of the salmon sack. Once the cutting process is done, the pieces are then sewn together and prepped for export. The first step for us was to get a good market and I saw in Germany recycling and environmental friendly products are yeah, quite famous at the moment. So here we had a good chance to chip in. The market in Germany, we, for sure we also, I have a company there, yeah, so everything has to be registered in the right way. You have to follow the processes for export and especially for import where you also have to pay some high taxes. Yeah, is yeah, quite important for us. So after we have finished the product by sewing, we come to the quality checking point. Yeah, so each product is checked uh, if it has the right quality, because also our market in Germany is expecting a very high quality. Each month, Newsy Black White produces around 300 items. Due to the high cost of shipping, the company only exports three times a year. Since the company is a non-profit, all proceeds from the sales go into supporting Karai Children's Vocational Center. So our main goal is to, to serve the children. Yeah, we are a children's home together with a primary and vocational school. So our main goal is always to, to create an income for the children. Yeah, we are, our goal is not to create a profit, it is to create something for the children. With this in mind, the team that consists of five employees has successfully immersed itself in the German market thanks to their unique, eco-friendly and artistic pieces. I see Africa always as an inspiration, especially Kenya. Also, already in recycling, I think they are very ahead of the European world. Yeah, everything gets a second use. So for me, it was quite inspiring. And I see it very important to tell that story to the other side of the world, yeah, that we are not just the third world country, Kenya. No, we are a great country and we can produce some nice things and we can bring them also to the other side and be proud of our products. And that's Kenya to the world. That story from Newsy Black White ushers us into the break, but when we return... I have actually visited and worked in over 42 African countries of the 54 major. Welcome back to the show. Now, in the first part, we took you to the United States, but now we're turning our lenses to Dakar, where Professor Willis Obura has been busy shaping the minds of the Senegalese youth. Take a look at this. Name any country on the African continent and chances are Professor Edward Willis Obura has lived there. From Kenya to Rwanda, Cameroon to Mali, Professor Obura is clearly a man on a mission. I have actually visited and worked in over 42 African countries of the 54 major. Currently, the well-traveled son of Kisumu is stationed right here in Dakar, Senegal. He is an economics and business professor at BEM Management School, which offers business-related courses. From the past two years, 
Professor Obura has been engrossed in enriching the lives of Senegalese youth through education, a move that he says was less challenging due to the welcoming and respectful nature of the residents. The first time I entered, I was actually surprised and dismayed. I was shown the class and the moment I entered, the students stood up and I got a little bit disorganized because that one happened to me when we were in primary school. And I said, please sit down. And they sat down. And immediately, mobile phone, bags, I've not said anything. Removed immediately, discipline, put under the table and everybody was now like this. According to the professor, this discipline also proved handy when it came to enacting his unique teaching technique. Education ought to be relevant. But when you look at the books or you go and download, you will see the US government. You will see what was not applicable to us. So I will look at what they are saying, look at it as a background, come back to our continent. What can we do? This approach is not only appreciated by the students, but also the administration. I'm Mrs. Diallo Montakasi, and I'm the Director for International Development. Professor Obura is a benediction. I know we have wonderful teachers, but all teaching in French. So when we have Pro Professor Obura, he's handling most of our business classes in the graduate level and in undergraduate level. So he's, he's very, very, very valuable for our programs. Let's now take a walk down memory lane and Professor Obura's passion for inspiring a paradigm shift in the minds of young Africans is not a new occurrence. It actually started back in his campus days while pursuing a degree in economics at Makerere University in Uganda. I remember the late Mwalimu Julius Nyerere coming to address us at uh, the university and giving us a speech that the future of Africa lied in our hands. Of course, most of us did not really understand what the, His Excellency the President meant, but we realized that uh, through the education we're having, we would have the task of trying to maneuver the Africa from the perceived concept that uh, we are totally underdeveloped, which is still the core up to now, to the sense that we are uh, intellectually bankrupt, which is still the core up to now. And uh, Julius Nyerere was trying to impress upon us that being at that university, we were being prepared to try to gear, to manoeuvre, to direct Africa from where it was to a better level. Speaking of his academic journey, Professor Obura also has a Master's in Agricultural Economics from the University of London, a Diploma in Macroeconomic Adjustment and Food Stroke Agriculture Policy from Harvard, and a PhD from Washington International University in the United States. Since graduating, Professor Obura has lectured at numerous institutions across Africa in his 20-year lecturing career. And from his experience, this is what the good professor believes is plaguing the continent. They say that the fish start rotting from the head. I don't blame the common person. We are exactly coping what our leaders are doing. We don't need, and I repeat it, we don't need the US. We don't need Europe. We don't need China. They need us more than we need them. They can only survive because of our own resources. But we don't take care of our own resources. By now, it is clear to everyone that Professor Obura's dream is seeing a united Africa. And from the looks of things, he is definitely not about to let this dream die. There is only one continent globally where you have black people, really black. Those are your brothers and sisters. I would advise my fellow brothers and sisters within the boundary of Kenya, look at your brothers and sisters outside the boundary of Kenya. And that's Daring Abroad. What an amazing story and as you've heard from the good professor, Africa has the ability to rise above and achieve economic freedom. All it takes is for us to be united. 
Time now for my Magical Kenya segment where we take you to various touristic attractions right here in the 254. And today we're at Lake Kisima in Maralal, Samburu County. And making her debut on Daring Abroad is our Lodo based reporter, Lauren Nanok. My Magical Kenya, brought to you by Chums Adventures. Welcome to Lake Kisima, an oasis of serenity situated right in the heart of Samburu County. Little is known about this lake that has been in existence for over 70 years. First, let us find out where its name originated from. Malalwa is a water place, the way it is. It's a small area holding water. It got its name by, by, by this area. This town is called Kisima. So, of course, anything near Kisima Airstrip, Kisima Girls High School, Kisima Lake. The spectacular lake and the site beside it is sacred to the Samburu community. The Samburu Council of Elders meet here. Circumcision ceremonies and prayers are conducted here as well. During the actual cut, this water is splashed on, on the face of, of, of the candidate so that uh, you, you get stiff, you, get, you are ready now. Tunapaka udongo ile ya red, ile ya wasamburu. Tunapaka hiyo udongo na tunakuja na ngosi. Atukuji na nguo hii ya kawaida. Wakati wa ukame mbaya, ikiwa ukame ile mbaya imeshindikana, tunakuja kuimba na kuomba kwa hii laga. Tunauliza mungu wa tusaidie na mpua. That when these women come here and do that kind of prayer, it rains. And the beautiful fleet of flamingos have occasionally been spotted, feeding on algae by the shores of Lake Kisima. The flamingos in Lake Bogoria, they come here. So you wake up one morning and you just find thousands and thousands of flamingos here. And immediately they, they, they consume the algae. They go back. There are four springs producing fresh water from the middle of the lake. Edwin Anyona, a first-time visitor in Samburu, shares his experience after making a trip to one of the gems. This is my first time in Ibuja. I realized there's a small lake in Samburu County. There's a spring of water in this place actually whereby we collect what we call clean water. Mimi nilikuwa nataka kujaribu kujua ukweli kabisa. Imagi really ni machi ya savi ya kunywa ama ni wongo. So already I tested the water. This is the water and it's clean actually. You can drink. Lake Kisima or Malalwa will soon be a great attraction site to local and even international tourists. And that is magical. Thank you Nanok for that amazing story. Truly Kenya is a magical place. On that note, we have come to the end of the show. Thank you for watching, keep safe, and see you next time.